Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Dan Wickline Show. This is not the Dan Wickline Show. This shows you how tired I am because ah, this is Pop Go the Writers, and normally Paul is here, but Paul is having to reboot his system, so he will be right back. But Paul will be with us in just a second. Speaking of which, here is Paul. Paul, I already said the welcome to Pop Go the Writers, and you didn't pop. There you I, go. I, I, and then, then I just didn't even pop because I screwed it up. There we go. Yeah. Might have to bring in a stunt pop for you, man. That, that's, yeah. that was really sad. <laughs> was, you whiffed on the pop. <laughs> I uh, it's the only thing I'm here for. <laughs> so you don't have to sully your own hands. That's right. <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of those shows already, and it just started. <laughs> yeah. We don't even have Jim Beard here to take us off the tracks. Uh. <laughs> A little punchy is what I'm saying. I've done I've done two free comic book days in the last two weeks. So Yeah, yeah. Well yeah, and I, I was up helping a helping my girlfriend after a bit of a fender bender while trying to teach her daughter how to drive. Nothing That's like a yeah. Nobody was hurt, but good. Yes, I was gonna say at least it wasn't a big Well, she did hit two cars. Wow. Okay. Yeah, still not sure how all that happened. There was like 15 miles an hour, popped up a curb, apologies started. Oh, my God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But kept one foot on the brake and one on the gas, full-on Sammy Hagar driving. Hit a car, kept going, hit another car. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hell of a way to start your driving career. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, so, <laughs> hey, what, so how did the uh, free comic book day go? Uh, the free comic book day at my store went uh, really well. Uh, we had a, a, it was interesting because we had a, a good crowd at the beginning, and then after about an hour or so, it dropped off, and I was starting to get get a little nervous, uh -huh. but we had waves. Um. My, uh, uh, but, uh, the, uh, operations manager for the company who also manages one of our other locations, uh, was there helping us out because her store had no power, not because of a storm, but because of an electrical fire at uh, Panera next to her. Um, yeah. So she was there to help out, which was great because I have not done a free comic book day behind the counter before. Um, but then I went to help her this week to for their makeup uh, free comic book day, which also went pretty well. Um, but yeah, a bunch of people were like, but I stopped by last week and you weren't here. Her, not me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yes, well, you noticed there were no lights. That's yeah. why. Yeah, you notice the Pandera, Pandera bread, Pandera bread was on fire, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a fire sale. <laughs> so yeah, it yeah. was it was coincided with their their little electrical mishap coincided with storm damage that took out about seventy thousand people in our area. So the promise the firemen made when switching off the electricity did not hold true. They're like, oh, you're a business. People will come and turn it back on. It's like, not if they're desperately trying to make everything else work. Anyway, true. both, true. both true. went pretty well. How yeah. about your week other than automobile issues? Uh, overall, did pretty good. Did my shows over on the experience. Uh, those seem to be picking up an audience. And then uh, released the third chapter of the Embercrest Protocol for uh, Kindle Vela. So mm -hmm. that's three chapters up there now. That's my uh, my kind of homage to 70s Cold War spy thriller meets magic, you know? Yep. Do so, you call uh, each ha chapter the hounds no. so that you can release them every week? Uh, I would actually go with Kraken, but... Uh, oh, there you go. I, yeah, yeah. No, no, we'll get I, Kraken on another chapter there, Dan. Oh, boy. Yeah, hang on a second. Cookie, get out. Out. I close the door and nobody bothers me. The dogs ignore the fact that my door doesn't close all the way. 
Ah. So, Paul, enjoy the show for a second. I'm going to step out so I can lock. Okay. So what what's happening this week is we're likely going to be talking about how uh, talking about the uh, the new Eternals trailer, and um, also the latest issue uh, episode issue. Wow, uh, can tell how old I am back when What If was a comic, not a TV show. We'll be talking about the uh, the latest uh, episode of What If, uh, which was. Uh, you know, uh, one of Chadwick Boseman's last roles, and uh, there there was a couple of heart heart jerking moments, tear jerking yeah. moments. I was yeah. just saying what we're talking about tonight, Dan. I appreciate that. Uh, besides your dog letting himself or herself into your yeah yeah, yeah. studio, we'll call it. It's my office. Yeah, there's sure. no bed in it. It's an office. Okay. Specifically, an office. My bedroom's on the other side, yeah. in a different room. I have the back end of the house myself. So, yeah. Please All right. Talk about your back end, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Eternals trailer. Or, or yeah, that, you have other points that you want to. No, no. Um, we could definitely go to the Eternals trailer. Um, uh, oh, actually, one of the things I wanted to bring up was um, Oscar Isaac. There's that possible costume that's floating around online mm. that's rather interesting looking. It's a little more in-depth and detailed than we normally get. It's usually the other way around where they, they kind of make it more of a grounded costume when it goes to the team, this is like, wow, this is actually more intense than the comic version. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, but also Isaac uh, was, uh, Oscar Isaac was asked about taking on the role of uh, Moon Knight. And I thought his, what he said was kind of interesting. I have to paraphrase it. Mm -hmm. But they were basically saying, look, you've already done Star Wars. You're doing Dune. And you've worked with a Marvel property with the X-Men as Apocalypse. Why would you want to jump in on another one? And his basic answer was, because this is unlike anything I've ever done before, we have the opportunity to do something here very different than anything has been done. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm assuming that's really kind of playing with the whole um, schizophrenia, multiple personality angle you've also got the the egyptian connection with yeah. Konshu and stuff like that and in a way i know kevin fye he has basically said that uh moon knight is going to be their version of indiana jones mm. so what i'm just kind of curious what you think we're going to get with moon knight and the fact that it's filming and um oh and one other thing i i found an interview with ethan hawk who is currently going is filming Moon Knight? He's going to play a baddish guy character. He's supposed to be the bad guy, and in a conversation with um, Bushman. Well, I don't know who he's playing. Nobody knows who he's playing. Oh, okay. But he was talking. To, I'm trying to remember who the uh, the the host was that was interviewing him, and it might have been Seth, Seth Myers. They did talk recently. Yep. Yeah. Who was very up on Moon Knight, which I thought was interesting. Oh, Seth Meyers is a great A comic book fan. His Twitter avatar is a drawing of Blue Beetle. Well, a drawing is, I think, him as Blue Beetle drawn by Kevin McGuire. I didn't know that. That's very cool. Just a little headshot. Yeah. Well, well, they were talking, he, he pointed out that Ethan Hawke was looking kind of like David Koresh. Right. And he, he mentioned that he was kind of working that into his character. Yeah. And I was trying to think, is there an actual cult character? And Bushman might count, but I don't think Bushman really fits that. Are there any other Moon Knight villains? Nothing springs to mind, but there was there was like a Kanshu cult that they dealt with for a while, although they were kind of helping Moon Knight. Yeah, I could see them taking 
that concept and Bushman and smashing them together, like uh, it, rather than just making Bushman a mercenary, uh, maybe they have him going. Maybe the reason he was on that expedition was because he was looking for, oh, I don't know, mystical vestments. Well, my other thought mm -hmm. that he could be playing is a more recent villain named the Sun King. Hmm. And the Sun King is, well, I'm just going to pull from one of the wikis. Not yep, much yep. is known about the man that would become known as Sun King. His past was even spotty for himself, but he remembered being from Southern United States and a Christian. He grew up physically abused at an early age, displayed the ability to set things on fire when he Im immolated his abuser, presumably his own father, his dramatic childhood, Continued as he lived on the streets. Uh, let's see. The man was transferred to the Ravencroft Institute. So he, he's get kind of a cult thing that he gets going. Sun King amassed a gathering of followers and relocated to St. Palamon's Island, which he rechristened as Isle Ra. He lured Moon Knight to the island and engaged him in a battle of wills, wherein the Sun King broke Mark's spirit. I'm just wondering if we're going to get the Sun King instead of Bushman. I, it's it is quite possible. I did a quick Google while you were reading and saw the uh, images for the Sun King, um, and he definitely has that uh, that shaggy, you know, the 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 kind of mad prophet look. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's just my thought on that. Is uh, <coughs> maybe. Ethan Hawke gave away a little bit about it there because we yeah, really yeah. don't know that much about the series. Right. You know? right. We know well, he's going to have the multiple personalities. It's going to be a very violent series, yeah. but not much else. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I could see, though, I could see a, 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 an element of that where, um, yeah, I mean, it, it would make sense, sun versus moon kind of, kind of set up. Um, could be, and, and uh, the fact that uh, uh, the Sun King has a, a much more um, direct power than just oh, you know, he's uh, Moon Knight. Traditionally, it's he's stronger if the moon is you know during during the night and when the moon right. is waxing rather than waning. Yeah. Um, so, now this this is definitely a more recent character. He was uh, created by Max Bemis and Jason Burroughs, mm -hmm. which shows that this was the more recent run. It's yep, listed yep. as Moon Knight one eighty eight, but I have a feeling that's the legacy numbering, right? Because I don't remember Moon Knight ever getting over a hundred. Yeah, yeah. I would love if it's that character, by the way, because Jason Burroughs, nice guy, and I'd like yes. to see him maybe get some money out of it. Oh yeah, I love Jason. He's great. Um, yeah, that was, uh, they, they call it Moon Knight 188, but, uh, and yeah, that was, uh, yeah, they don't give the legacy number, which is weird. Yeah. Cause yeah. they usually do it on the comic. Uh, interesting though, that they got Ravencroft connected to him. Right. Uh, you know, because Ravencroft is currently going to come up in the Venom movie. That's where, uh, Shriek is being held. Right, right. So, will that will uh, they share Ravencroft between the two universes, or you know, you know that's their Arkham Asylum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so. uh, yeah, I mean, I I could see you know it might end up being like a uh, Quicksilver thing because yeah. it, it it's. It's not so firmly connected to Spider-Man that it would have to be just one or the other. So they could easily do that. Plus, there seems to be much more uh, synergy, as the business people like to say. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I've always been a fan of Moon Knight since I encountered him in his second appearance in uh, Werewolf by Night, didn't get his first appearance in Werewolf by Night, the previous issue, yeah. until years later. Um, 
because that's how it was back in the olden days. When you went down to the five and dime and was looking at the spinner rack to see what they had. Yep. It's sometimes you miss a miss a month or something, and then you're just stuck. Oh, yeah, there were no comic shops back then, you know. Yeah. Or if they were, they were very far away. You had to had to order from the back of the mile uh, comic book from Mile High in in Colorado and hope they would send it to you. Yeah, I uh, I, I tell you, it never. I I don't know why. Never occurred to me to just say to the uh the guy at the counter, "When do your comics come in?" I just thought they mystically appeared somehow yeah. at some random point. So yeah, yeah you're in the rack. Were to be had in 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 many a collection. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I I remember uh, after the five and nine, it was Seven Eleven. Yep. And uh, riding my bike down there when the new universe debuted, mm -hmm. my best friend and I immediately got out of school. We knew what day we actually knew what day the books appeared. And we rode, rode our bikes all the way from the school right to the 7-Eleven and grabbed as many of the New Universe books that came out as we could. Yeah. And that was like, oh, my God, we're getting on the ground floor of something. This is going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, hey, there were some good books in there. Yes. And then there was Spitfire and the Troubleshooters and Kicker's Inc. <laughs> well, Kicker's Inc. was no NFL super pro, but still. True. I believe he wore an ascot. Yo, uh, yeah, or a neckerchief at least, or a neckerchief. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I, you know, too. I, uh, I remember also, you know, people saying, "Boy, the comic companies were so foolish to, um, to like lose uh, rack at the newsstands and the Seven Elevens." I think it was Tom Brevert that pointed out, Marvel editor. Oh, like executive editor, I think. Um, yeah. Now, uh, who pointed out? Oh, they didn't give it up. Seven Eleven realized they could stick a video game in the space of a spinner rack, and, and they didn't have to do anything. Just the the vi people who rented them the video game came by every once in a while, emptied out all the quarters, gave them their cut. As opposed to with the uh, comics, they had to uh, go through, pull the ones, rip the covers yeah. off, send them back. Um, so it it was just a matter of like economically, it made much more sense to put in a video game instead of doing the, uh, oh, yeah. the comics. Yep. Yep. All right. Oh, uh, speaking of the the Venom thing, um, there was a recent uh, somebody asked Michael uh, Keaton about the fact that his character from Spider-Man uh, no, um, Homecoming was appearing in Morbius. And he's like, well, how does that work? Are those connected? He goes, dude, I just show up when they tell me to, and I play the part they tell me to play. I don't know how this any this works. I just, I'm just i just doing what they tell me to do. So you know, ask someone else. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. Um, yes. I, it would have also been equally funny if he had spun a whole big story about how interconnected it was and then said, what the do I know? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's over there trying to figure out how am I still alive as Batman in this universe? Yes, over here? Right? Yeah, I can't figure it out. Which, which wing, winged uh, beast am I in this, yeah. in this comic book universe? Yeah. Shows up in the Birdman costume instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just want a picture of him and Ben Affleck in the suits pointing at each other. Like the Spider-Man meme. Right. Well, they wouldn't really be pointing at each other. They'd be shrieking at each other so they could echolocate. I don't have another guest, so I can't really mute you. Speaking of the Eternals, let's move Speaking on. Of the Eternals. All right. First thing I think, um, that that dropped at midnight with no fanfare. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa sent it to me at like 3 in the morning. I wake up, and I'm like, what do you mean there's an Eternals trailer? I was like, we already seen the. Oh, no, it's the final trailer. Yeah, which, which I thought was interesting. There was one, and 
It, it, there was Alpha and Omega. On yeah, the, pretty uh, much. Yeah. Omega. Um, Omega. 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 Yes. Hey, you brought up Bad Batch. I did. So, it comes up on its own like acid, uh, acid reflux. <laughs> nice. Thanks. So, uh, so I, I, the weird part was like uh, when I saw a reference to it, I tried to search it. And I, I came across a bunch of these fan, uh, fan trailers before I actually found the real one. Because, like you say, they just dropped it. Um, yeah. So Yeah, I was stunned by it because it was like, wait, what? And, and was really surprised because um, I didn't expect. I mean, there was everybody's asking about, oh, is there going to be another? Uh, when, when is Spider-Man going to drop or? We're, we're getting all this stuff with um, Shang-Chi and, you know, there, there was the the shock of uh, Ben Kingsley showing up for the red carpet and going, oh, no, I'm in this film. And it's like, oh, we're getting Trevor Slattery. How nice. You know, like, will he really be Trevor Slattery? But there was just so much news and stuff to yeah. sit there and go, wait, oh, oh, and here's the Eternals trailer. And yeah. we're actually going to give you some of the plot. Yeah, yeah, ish. I, yeah. I do like how. Oh, we've finally given you some, a scene with the Black Knight. Oh, why didn't you help humanity? We're told not to. By who? Yeah, picture of a <laughs> celestial. Yeah, <laughs> but it was just like we don't learn anything about Dane. Yes, that, you know, it's just like I. Well, I honestly don't think him being the Black Knight is ever going to come up. In the in the movie. Oh now see I thought that um I thought that the next segment showed him in the Crusades. Um Dane Whitman was never in the Crusades. Ah, Dane Whitman was in the Crusades. Oh well, because yeah, he, he was goes sent, back in the Crusades. Yes, he was sent but, back to uh, live in his ancestor's body while he was a statue. Now what I would pursue Do you really think Marvel's gonna do that? No, but what I but what they might do is um, is have the uh, ebony blade be a a factor, and maybe it it um, gives him visions of the past. Yeah, I could see that. So, but I I don't I I have a feeling we're not going to even get um, the ebony blade and that stuff until like maybe the ending, like an end credit scene or something, you know. I don't know. You you make Kit Harrison a, a character that dresses up like uh, in medieval clothing, and you don't put him in the, the medieval clothing. I think there's going to be a lot of angry Kit Harrison fans. Yeah, but I think both of them can get over it. Yes, both of them. <laughs> both of the women who drooled over Kit Harrison as Jon Snow. Um. <laughs> But hello, Andrew. By the way, yeah, I'm I'm actually trying to find Andrew on uh, Facebook real quick, but I can't. I was going to send him a. There it is. Since he's watching, I was going to just shoot him an invite to the ch chat and see if he joins us. <laughs> you're, you're, what you're saying is you want a third person, so you don't have to rely rely on me. No. No, not at all. So, uh, what was your favorite part of the trailer? Um, uh, Hephaestus, his humor was surprisingly good. Ah. Uh-oh, that's why you can't find him. He's, why? Uh, yeah. I'm not seeing that, hang on. Uh, I'm not I'm on not Facebook. On Facebook. Hacking Hacking the blocks for the okay. Blocked it for the moment. So. Okay. Well, I don't have Sorry, any other way to contact Andrew. you. I would have brought you on. Sucks. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to throw you an invite, let you join us. But, uh, uh, all right. So, um, I, I liked his humor. I liked the, you know, what else has ever saved the world? Your sarcasm. Yes. Um, I, I, I kind of felt like he was talking to you. Um, what? The Ikea line at the end was very well delivered. 
Um, I overall, I thought it was it was um, a good trailer, but there's something I want to get to, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. I thought the deviants were interesting because in the comics, they always just appeared to be humanoid with mutated genes. Yes. I mean, you had a few of them that were horrific, but like Crow was just a, a kind of very pink guy with yeah. a bald head and sunglasses. Like he was like an equivalent of Thanos. Who Thanos is an eternal with the uh, deviant gene in him. Yeah, according yeah. to history. So I thought it would be that. But Crow. I mean, I've even seen the toy version of him. Something Andrew could have told us about. And it is just very. It's like he is in the movie where he's all elongated and mm-hmm. stuff, or or the like the. There, there is a different look to them. Yeah, you know, yeah, very much so. You know, I, um, it, it. I know there's no connection, but uh, it. Oh God, oh, you know what it reminded me of? <laughs> the, What's that? The Daemonites from the Wildcats cartoon. Yes. Damn, Where that's a fake reference. I know. <laughs> I mean. Um, it's on. It it was on. I think Tubi uh, last year. May still be. So I I like watched the first uh, episode and went. Oh, that's why I didn't watch the rest of that show. But um, but yeah, the idea that most of them seem more like like uh, animalistic rather than yeah 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 yeah. See, I always I I, I always remember the Wildcats cartoon because. Um, there was an episode where there was a tornado coming towards this woman's house and she runs out, but it's taking place in South America and she runs out of the house going, El Diablo is aquí! And I, I've used that line a lot since. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why that strikes me as so hilarious. But it always strikes me as funny. Because, because, yeah. Perhaps because it's coming out of your voice, you know, out of your mouth just strikes me. Could be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yes, I was surprised that the deviants didn't look like um and I can't remember the big uh the big deviant that um you know the real monstrous one with the gigantic head. Um, oh yeah. Um the deviants were well, uh, th- this is going to get to what I think is the real topic about the Eternals is everybody, I mean, a lot of people are excited for it, but do people really care about the Eternals within the comic community? It's, it's certainly got, I think it has, um, you know, I think that they have the, uh, that it has a fandom, but certainly it's not, um, it doesn't even have the fourth world level of fame. No, that's my yeah. And I, I, I one of the things I've seen is some people are complaining that they didn't embrace the Jack Kirby look as much as they could have. And I think that they did that on purpose because there was supposed to be a fourth world movie coming out mm-hmm. from um, oh I can't remember the woman's name now. She just did that time travel kids thing, kids time travel movie. But anyway, there was this. They were working on a uh, a fourth world movie and it got canned. But they had talked about how they were really going to lean into the Jack Kirby designs. So mm-hmm. Marvel, of course, wouldn't want to do the exact same thing. So they let Chloe Zhao kind of go her own direction. Yeah, you know? I mean, the, the, there are certainly hints of the. Designs. I mean, Thena's outfit looks pretty much the same as she did in the comics. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, it was. Uh, yeah, I think it it would have been unusual um, if they had gone full. Uh, was that? Full was Kirby. that? Yeah, full Kirby, but. Because I mean, they didn't even really go full Kirby in um, in Thor, 
Right. Yeah. Was yeah, that I mean, the name Carcass, that. by the way? K A R K A S. Might have been. Oh, is the big red guy with like the silver pants? Giant head. Uh, yes, that is the one I'm thinking of. I always thought it was Krakus, but it could be Carcass. It is K A R K A S. So, Carcass. I mean, okay, sure. Sure, he could be Krakus if you disregard spelling conventions and pronunciation conventions. Yeah. Andrew makes a good point that even with all that was shown in the trailer, there seems to be a lot remain hidden. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I do find it interesting that we only ever see Ajax, Selma Hayek's character, in what looks to be like the early stuff. And then she doesn't seem to be around in most of the group stuff unless it's a flashback. Mm. You know, the, the scene where they're going to find um, Druig, she's not there. Now, it could be that she's kind of trying to keep the, the, the uh, what's uh, the emergence from happening. Right. You know, and we, and if you read the Neil. Okay, that's my other thing is that if you had to pick a great eternal story to get someone to read, what would you suggest that wasn't the Neil Gaiman run? Oh, and I don't even know the Eternals well enough to say. Uh, yeah. I would say probably the original the original Kirby series. Uh, because that's always a safe bet, you know. Uh as far as the big ideas and the establishment yeah. of the characters. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you never uh, go full Kirby? Never. Yes, I just saw that. Yeah. Um, the irony of Robert Downey Jr. being the one that, uh, that says it in, in uh, Tropical Thunder is even better. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to see, you know, something that uses, like, well, of course, you know me. I'm the guy that's always complaining that the only reason that they don't use comics accurate cart, uh, um, outfits is because they're convinced they can't do comics accurate outfits. Uh, right. Well, uh, I've read the Neil Gaiman John Romita Jr. run. Yeah. Which I thought was very good. But yeah, yeah. it had this kind of unique thing where they were all, they had all forgotten themselves and who they were. Their memories were wiped. And mm -hmm. we find out that one of them did it. And something's happened to cause basically an emergence, which in the book, that's a sleeping celestial under the ground of Earth. And when it wakes yeah. up, it's going to destroy a lot of stuff. Sure. You know, and they're trying to figure out a way to keep it sleeping or to keep the judgment from happening, all of that. Right, right. And it looks like they're going a different direction here in the, the whole thing that they were, they've all forgot who they were. It looks like they just went separate ways after a while. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah so I'm not sure. I know there's been a couple series other than that, but there really isn't a lot of great Eternals material. Or at least, like, universally acknowledged. Right. That's the, yeah, that's yeah. the... You know, I mean, okay, t take the easy one. You see Batman, and you go, oh, Long Halloween, The Dark Knight Returns, Hush. I mean, you could just start rattling off these great uh, Batman runs. Fantastic Four, you know, you could do... There's, there's, there's runs during that line that you could call on or just about any comic or Spider-Man, you know, Oh, the death of Gwen Stacy. Shang-Chi. You can't really go, Oh, well, this is, I mean, yes, the Mensch uh, Galassi years were really good. Yeah. But you can't pull out uh, most people, m most more casual readers can't pull out a, Oh, this is a seminal run other than the, you know, um, yeah, there are just some that don't have... Well, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy didn't have anything to do with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It, it had more to do with the Dan Abnett, uh, Andy Lamming. Yeah, Lamming run. yeah but, it, but it didn't really have that... Um, 
But do you think that that would have been considered a, a seminal run or a widely known uh, story arc? It was pretty popular at the time. Hmm. It had gotten popular. I mean, of course, I still think of the, the, the Jim Valentino run. Yeah. You know, that's that's the Eter that's the Guardians to me. Yeah. Um, but the um, just not seeing it with, with with the Eternals. They're even the original story. I mean, with with Shang-Chi, you know that there was these long runs of his own magazine yeah. or his own book. Um, the Eternals didn't even seem to have, I mean, I, I think if you pull them all together, legacy numbering wise, maybe they've had 50 appearances. Yeah. Not, not counting the fact that Cersei was an Avenger for years. Right. And years. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, compared to say the Inhumans, they're not nearly as, as popular, as popular as the Inhumans are. Yeah. I mean, even for comic readers, the Eternals, are kind of a vague group, you yeah. know. You know, you know Icarus, you know Cersei, maybe Makari, and then you kind of, you know, vague on the rest of the names. Yeah, I think I know them better now because we've been covering it. But yeah, well, I I know most of what I know about the Eternals is from reading the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, or as we nerds call it, Ohatmu. No, no, nobody calls it Ohatmu. Um, They'll type Ohatmo, but nobody calls it Ohatmo. They call it the handbook. If you say so. I just thought it was weird that they named the the uh, nicknamed the handbook the same thing as the watcher's name. Utah the Watcher? Ohatmo the Watcher. Yeah. Andrew says, what is Gilgamesh's relationship to the Eternals? He is an Eternal. He's the forgotten one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So he was an Avenger as well for a while. Yep. So, but yeah, um, Gilgamesh is an Eternal. Yeah. But apparently not in this movie. And he's supposed to also have some kind of relationship with Athena, who has a relationship with Crow. Athena, not Athena. Is it just Athena? It's just Athena. Okay. Because they, okay. they he, Kirby was very careful to make them close but, different, yeah. like Icarus is spelled differently yes. um, Macari instead of Mercury um, Hephaestus, Hephaestus. Yeah. It's, it's spelled just yeah so I asked because what is my specialty toys oh I thought he was going to say Etruscan myths although uh, technically, Gilgamesh is actually a Sumerian myth, right? Yeah, maybe that is Andrew's specialty. We've just never hit upon it before. That's true. What is your specialty that you're referring to, Andrew? He's Gog and the Sumerian. <laughs> uh, woo. Uh, he says close, Paul. Fill me in. Let me rephrase that. Nope. It's on the air now. <laughs> oh. That's just Mesopotam Mesopotamian. Oh, no. Uh, Gilgamesh is in the trailers. Is he? Yeah. There's a scene where uh, Athena, or excuse me, Athena swings the sword around and Gilgamesh puts up his arm and blocks it. Ah, that's Gilgamesh. Yes, that's Gilgamesh. Let's see who's playing Gilgamesh. Uh, Brian Sung Young Lee, I think it is, or Don Lee. It's his name. Oh no, Gilgamesh is being played by Ma Dong Ma Ma Dong Siok. Well, that's interesting because I just looked it up and maybe he goes by by Don Lee. Um, Not that I, Oh, he goes by Lee Dong Siak or ah, Ma Dong Siak, yeah. Ma Dong Siak, parentheses, D 
Don Lee joins Marvel's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Same guy. I miss yeah. that though. And he was in stuff like the train to Busan, the gangster and the cop, the outlaws, the bad guys, the movie unstoppable. So he's got a pretty good pedigree of films and stuff, but yeah, he's Gilgamesh. Yeah. So, uh, Am, am I uh, missing? Oh, he's, a build a, he's the build a figure for the Eternal Toy Wave. Ah. Yeah, no, he's. he's yeah, he's. I, I, I thought it's usually B A M F. Um, and I thought, uh, and then I did not that's, realize. Yeah, that's that's just the Nick Fury figure. But see, I just didn't know what B A F meant in toy terms. Ah, so I was like. Confused. Yep. No, that's uh yeah, so Gilgamesh has been seen in the trailers. He was in the first trailer too, but it just goes so quickly. And build wise, if you're not looking closely, he's got a similar build to Hephaestus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I could see if you're not paying close attention. They don't look anything alike, but if you're like looking just at silhouettes or shapes. Silhouette. Right, right. Yeah. So, all right, but yeah, so the history of the Eternals character for anybody who doesn't know comics, uh, Stan, um, Jack Kirby was with Marvel for a big long time, and then there was a kind of a falling out. He wanted more control, whatnot, and a lot of credit. Uh, the way it was set up, that most of the credit for the comics were going to Stan. Stan became the figurehead for the company. He was the one that was out doing most of the interviews. He was also very gregarious, very outgoing. So people loved to have him on the shows where Jack was more reserved. Um, Danny Fingeroth talks about this a lot in his recent Stan, Stan Lee biography. But so Jack left Marvel to go to DC where they offered him to allow him to do his own creation. So he started with Jimmy Olsen and then introduced the fourth world through that, along with Mr. Miracle, um, the Forever People, and then uh, the New Gods. And he created this whole thing, but well, you know, a ways into it, the sales weren't where they wanted it to be, and they pulled the plug on it before he had a chance to really finish up the story he wanted to tell. And he ended up going back to Marvel. Well, when he got back to Marvel, he still wanted to do this big space epic. So he fired up the Eternals and started doing it. And it never really caught on at Marvel either. I mean, they did, I think it was 12 issues and ended up pulling the plug on it. And, and again, he didn't really, I, as I understand it, in both cases, he didn't really want them being a part of the mainstream universe, right? At DC or at Marvel, uh, the either either the New Gods or the Eternals as part of the mainstream. But of course, they immediately were like, "But if it's not the mainstream, nobody will, you know, our regular books, nobody will care." Exactly. So, yeah. So, um, I just don't know if the Eternals really have that big a history. Uh, they tend to pop up in other people's books. They show up in the Avengers books, stuff like that. But overall, there is not this big love affair of the Eternals as you get with other groups, even, like I said, the Inhumans, you know, yeah, but yeah. they're toxic now because of what happened on the TV show. You know, they won't be touching Inhumans for a while, which is going to be interesting to see what they do with Miss Marvel, who's supposed to be an, um, an Inhuman, but yeah, she's yeah. getting her own series. But so it, it's kind of weird to me that they're going with the Eternals, but you know it, it looks pretty incredible. But they were they were talking about initially they were talking about using the Inhumans as a theatrical release. Yes, and then they shifted things to do them on TV, not as well as they could have, um, and. Uh, and so I'm wondering how much of it was a, 
Well, like a, a swap out. Like it, that they were like, well, we wanted to accomplish this with the Inhumans, but maybe we can use the Eternals. Um, because, of course, now, now the Inhumans, as I remember, were altered by the Kree. There were humans altered by the Kree, whereas... Surge and Mist. Yeah. Well, yes, but the, but the Kree were the ones behind that. Right. Whereas with the Eternals, their um, their genesis was was uh, Celestials. Celestials, yeah. Right, but then again, the Kree were genesis was the Celestials. Yeah. According according to that, the 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 Kree and the Scrolls were from the same race, and the Celestials played with them to create these two offshoots. Yep. yep. That's why they're constantly feuding. So. I know, see, I missed that. So, so weirdly, they retconned the Kree and the Skrull to be like the um, Deviants uh, and Eternals. Eternals and the Deviants, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, it's... I'm just... Do you think... Do you think they're going to take... I mean, this is a pretty big concept, yeah, this yeah. may be one of the bigger concepts Marvel's had to tackle. I mean, sure, the whole time thing with uh, He Who Remains, that's pretty big, but they're doing it on a TV show in little bite-sized pieces. Right. This is big in a two-hour movie. Yeah. Well, of course, the Celestial, but the Celestials have been established, even if the casual viewer didn't know it, in Guardians, because nowhere oh, yeah, yeah. the the head of a celestial. Yeah, and also the uh, little vi uh, little uh, vignette that um, the collector shows them using yeah. the power stone is a celestial that does it. Yeah, but, yeah. and I'm and I'm kind of curious now. I know in the trailer we get to see Arashem the Judge and what looks like J uh, Jemiah the Analyzer which are the two that really do the judgment mm -hmm. if a planet's going to exist. So I'm curious if that is what the emergence is, one of them returning, or if it's going to, if they're going to borrow from the Neil Gaiman story and that there is an actual uh, celestial growing inside of the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and now see, and what I, I was kind of wondering if they were going to substitute it, because nobody seems to know about the deviants is that the idea, the idea that like maybe the deviants are slumbering and the eternals are maybe one of the reasons why they kind of just thrifted off was because the deviants never emerged. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I think, that, yeah, I think the, the thing is that with the fact that there really isn't that big of a love for the eternals and there really isn't that much source material, yeah, Marvel yeah. can pretty much do whatever they want. Well, right, and, and and I feel like they they did that very much with um, uh, with um, Guardians as yeah. well, where there there's some vague stuff. Now, Guardians I think is more popular than the Eternals. I may be wrong about that, mm -hmm. um, but because uh, they don't have quite the pedigree. You know they they aren't a Jack Kirby creation, but they the, the Marvel Studios went out and very much went whatever way they they wanted with these characters. Um, yeah. They tied they tied uh, Quill in with Ego the Living Planet. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean they they you know so they didn't they they gave themselves much more leeway I think, and so I think that'll be what we're seeing with. Uh, with the Eternals, that they'll, they'll, they won't be feeling quite so bound to Fair any enough. particular thing. Well, I guess they're kind of doing that with Shang Chi, yeah, as well. Well, Shang Chi, they had to fix some stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the Fu Manchu is such a a horrendously racist character. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's such an example of the Yellow Peril. Um, What's the term? Cliche. Yeah. The whole yeah. fact, you know, yes, you're Asian, so you're a bad guy. 
I mean, that's pretty much all it was. Is that, oh, and you're you're inscrutable, and you know ancient secrets. Yeah. Um, you know, and and yes, the the yellow peril, as you say. Um, yeah. So, but then the Mandarin was a bit of the yellow peril too when he was created. Certainly, because we were in the war in Vietnam, and and you know they yeah. they certainly went that route. Um, but I think they've done a better job of uh, moving the character away from that over the recent years. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that it's it's in the same way that our position with China in the real world is not the same as as it right. was in the 60s. I think that's allowed for, you know, us to kind of update uh, those those approaches, which thankfully, yes, yeah. yeah, there was there was some horrendous stuff. Now, I find it interesting. There's a, a recent interview. I think it was Slash Films had it with uh, Tony Leung, who's playing Wen Wu. And they asked him about approaching a character like this. And his big thing was to not approach him as a villain. Yeah. To approach it from, this is a man who, you know, fought to build his power, is is worried about his legacy, is, you know, his family, that kind of stuff. And so he, he approached it completely different than you would the whole must, mustache twirling villain approach. Mm -hmm. which I kind of think was super necessary because China is already looking at Shang-Chi because of the history with Fu Manchu and are leery about it. And yeah, they yeah. still think that the Mandarin is a yellow peril character as well. So yeah, it's yeah. going to have to really be something special for them to allow it to air in China. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no uh, there, there's no guarantee that the Eternals are going to play in China either, because of Chloe Zhao, you mm -hmm. know, and her protests and stuff. So that's two major Marvel films that could lose big chunks of the market by not being allowed in the Hidden Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So um, overall, I thought I thought it was a good trailer. I thought there was bits of humor that made it light. There was enough action. Um, Icarus really does look like a, uh, a Superman pastiche. Analog. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I noticed that is the, the, I guess he always really has been, if you think about it, but I, it just struck me as, wow, he, you know, super strong eye beams flight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Red, yellow, and blue costume. Just looking for the S curl. Yeah. Uh, but at least in the comics, he was blonde. Here he's, you know, brunette. Yeah. So oh, his hair is reddish. Yeah. And he's got a beard. I do find it interesting that they're allowing the actors to use their natural accents. Yeah. Which I think is great because I think it gives a very international feel to this group, which works. Yes. Or in the, or in the case of Angelina Jolie using her Lara Croft accent. Very, I mean, it's like, I was listening and I was like, that's very kind of tinging with, with the English. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, not that I'm complaining. Um, but uh, yes, I, I think that'll. I, I think they'll they'll play that up in the movie as these people all having gone their separate ways and you know picked up whatever dialect or yeah. languages where they were. Well, I was surprised by Richard Madden. I'm listening to him. I'm like, that's almost a brogue. And then I looked it up. Like, oh yeah, he's Scottish. I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah. Like, so that's a natural thing, you know. Yes. And then, um, Kit Harrington. His accent, he, he he doesn't seem to enunciate very well. He's got a little muddle mouth on him that he, you know. So I'm kind of curious how that's all going to work out. And I mean, I, I like the characters. Not being a big Game of Thrones fan, I wonder who, from the people who are, how weird is it to see 
Rob Stark and John, uh, John Snow playing basically in a three two thirds of a love triangle. Uh, I'm here for it. Oh yeah, I'm all for it. But I'm just like I said, did, did you watch Game of Thrones? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Because I I'm a long term Song of Ice and Fire um, fan. I I had read all the books to date by the time the thing came out. Um, and by the way, all the books. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I have you ever seen the um, have you ever seen the uh, video of um uh sophie and um oh shoot um the the two stark daughters um sansa and our uh, yes Arya. but uh I, I i'm forgetting their real names um for some reason anyway it's them driving around in the car and they start doing sean bean accents it is beautiful it is just, uh, I. It's worth looking up. I should. Have. How how has Sean Bean not shown up in the Marvel universe yet? Oh, he has several times, but he just died in production. His scenes were cut. Mm. We need Sean Bean in the MCU. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I want to, and I want to see Sean Bean in the MCU and have him survive. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's a shame he's a little too old to be the um, the blue collar Union Jack. Yes, Joey. Yeah. Joey Chapman. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, we're but we were also going to talk about what if, and we're down yes. to like a, a half hour's worth. Do you think we can manage to do it justice in a half hour? I think we can. So we'll switch to that. Sophie just. Turner, thank you. Bob Crochets, Sophie Turner, and Maisie Williams. So mm -hmm. what's Sophie? I did get that part. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't believe I forgot Maisie Williams, uh, who is also uh, Marvel Universe adjacent because she was uh, Rain uh, in, in the New uh, Mutants. In New Mutants, yeah. Which I have not watched. I have it on Blu ray. Yeah. Sitting here on my desk next to me, I just haven't sat down and watched it yet. I keep telling, I I keep going. Oh, I should watch that, and then then everybody I know that's seen it is like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, because it's got a good cast, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Before we get to what if, there's a show I'm watching right now, and I wanted to bring it up. I don't know if I brought it up before because I do a lot of these shows now. Um, have you heard of Harrow? Harrow. H a r r o, H a r o w, yes. There's a w. H a r r o w. Yes. Yeah. Harrow. No. Harrow is the best way to describe it. It's Quincy with a touch of Dexter to it. Okay. Ian Grufford, you know, Mister Fantastic from the early. Oh, right. You did mention it before. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're about eight episodes into this show now. I guess it's three seasons, but it's pretty fascinating. I mean, I, I, I really like it. It's on Hulu. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good, I mean, if you're just looking for a series to watch, he's a, a forensic pathologist, which is the exact same job he did on Forever. Right. It's like they took that character and just moved him on. Yes. But he lives on a boat like Quincy. I mean, there's a lot of Quincy touches in there, too. Bum, ba -da -da -bum, bum, yep. ba -da -da -bum, His bum. assistant is, he, he's either a Asian or part Asian. Mm -hmm. And he was from the Spider-Man Far From Home. He was the kid that was left behind during the snap, who's now an adult. I think he's Brad, and he's trying to hit on MJ. Boy, I don't remember him. Yeah, um, he's the one that catches uh, the pictures of Peter changing out of his costume with the uh, German woman from S.H.I.E.L.D. who's giving him the costume. Wow, I don't remember that at all. Yeah, well, that's the guy he played. It, it's a pretty interesting show. They do a lot of... Uh, but the weirdest thing is it's an Australian show. Mm. 
And anytime they show a dead body on a slab, it's just there. It's like they don't do any other nudity in the show, but dead bodies. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Of course, uh, down in Australia, dead bodies swirl the other way. Yes. The Coriolis effect. A a absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Bob Crochets or Tyler, you ready to be my new co host? <laughs> What will right, you do so, without my fandom, Dan? I, I think both of them would stay. <laughs> I cannot argue that. Um, okay, so if you're looking for a new show to watch and Harrow, it's worth watching. Plus, Ian, Ian Groffitt has this amazing look that he gets, this concerned look, where he'll look at the camera and he'll turn away and raise one eyebrow. And that's, oh, he just figured it out. Yeah. And that's uh, that's also known in his, as his, why was I in Fantastic Four? Love oh, yeah, the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on to what if, episode two, what if T'Challa became a Star-Lord, which I find it fascinating that it's literally a Star-Lord, not Star-Lord. Ah, but, I did not even realize that. Yeah. 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 Like, well, anybody can be a Star Lord. You know? all, you, all you have to do is say it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Though it does seem like he earned it. And yes. the fact that Korath is this major fanboy <laughs> just immediately changes the entire episode. Yes. Yeah. It becomes yes. so much fun. Yeah. Yes. And, from and, from who to oh, oh my god, do I bow? I feel like we should be bowing. Yeah. And it's more of an honorary title. Yeah. I love that. I love the I shouldn't choose a gun. Should I we are we are here to fight? Oh, okay, I'll use a gun. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, it was so well done. Yes. Um this is like more than just what if T'Challa became Star Lord. This was Let's go hang out in the cosmic corner of the universe, of the Marvel yeah. Universe. Let's bring in everybody, you yeah. know? And just about every voice, every actor came back. Right. To voice his character, even was, tiny bitch, bitch parts. Yeah. Well, Kurt Russell came back for one line. For Ego, yeah. yeah. Where Chris, Chris Pratt didn't. But And then there was some kind of confusion with Dave Bautista not coming back. Yeah, um, yeah. He, they they extended an invitation, but his agent didn't get it to him. Uh. So, so yeah, I mean, he should have, he should have been in there and he probably would have been, but it just didn't, there was some kind of confusion, but then he didn't have a big part either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, the, the new version of Nebula was great. Of course, we all know what the absolute best thing about the, the episode was Howard the Duck. No, that that Nebula's nickname for Cha Cha. Was yes. Cha Cha. <laughs> it, it makes perfect sense. T'Challa, Cha Cha. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. Um. I thought it was a really good story. You yeah, know, yeah. It, it it seemed a little Pollyanna in the fact that this one guy could come in and just change all these people. And then you stop and you think, that's kind of T'Challa's character. Yeah. He's that, that he's almost a Nelson Mandela type. Yeah. You know, yeah. or um, 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 Desmond Tutu, the, the type that could bridge uh, any kind of differences. Yeah. Although, apparently, though, um, he stopped the whole Infinity War thing and all this stuff. Yet in the collector's um, collection, <laughs> Captain America's shield, Thor's Thor hammer, hammer headpiece. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, like something awful went down on Earth that he ended up with all this stuff. Um, Does it so make it sense? All, was not all uh, 
puppies and rainbows. Right. Well, I don't think he cared that much about Earth once he left, and then uh, Yondu told him that uh, Wakanda was destroyed. But yeah, um, did you know that uh, was it? D- Dene Guerrero, the, um, Oko- Okoyo, came yeah. back for that one line where she's talking to Josh Brolin. I did not realize that. Yeah, that's how you know everybody came back. Yeah. By the way, Josh Brolin as the, as a reformed Thanos was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. But they he's genocide still- one more time. <laughs> yeah. That was Captain Genocide. Captain Call me Genocide. Captain Genocide once more. Yeah. Captain Genocide. <laughs> I'm still not sh- convinced it wouldn't have worked. Yes. Yeah. That uh-huh. sounds like genocide. It's not because it's random. Yeah, yeah that was the thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was a clever episode. Um, yeah. I, re- I, I, I thought bringing Howard the Duck in was interesting. Yep. They seemed like they could have done a little more with him once they got him there. You know, and Seth Green popping up the voice, but him stopping at the bar kind of made sense. Yeah, yeah. And let's be honest, Howard in the Marvel Universe is uh, an Easter egg. Uh, not He's not really a character. Um, I, could I, I mean, they haven't done anything with him, right? Really. Yeah. So, like them pulling him back out, I can kind of understand because that's not necessarily the venue that they want to establish everything. Like he's been in the Marvel cartoons, but how much would you want to see Duck Fu against the Collector? Not Duck Fu, Quack Fu. Quack foo, you are you. I, I stand corrected. Yep. Quack foo. Um. Gee, I'm old. <laughs> Since I remember the mass Howard the Duck master of quack foo ads. Now, how cool would it have been if behind Howard the Duck was another container with a member from Kiss in it? <laughs> but then you have to introduce Mephisto. True. Just yeah. Peter Chris sitting back there with his dr- tossing drumsticks, you know? Yeah. Because he's not touring with them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, and, and you'd have to like get one line. Can I at least take off my makeup? Yes. No. <laughs> um, if yeah, I feel makeup, you're not, you know, mint in on card anymore. Um, I thought I thought what they did with the collector was really interesting because I wouldn't have thought him of becoming kind of the powerhouse right. with Thanos right. not there. I mean, it seemed like there's other figures who would take that. It just didn't. Tanavir didn't seem like the guy. Yeah, and I think that they kind of went that route because they wanted to stick with Guardians characters. Yeah. And he is, and and he is a uh, an elder of the universe. Yes, he is. So you know, even even the nice elders of the universe aren't all that nice. I I want to see more of the elders. I mm-hmm. want Benicio del Toro and Jeff Goldblum to have a scene together. Sure. When they when uh, when we found out that Russell Crowe was going to be playing somebody in Thor in Thor: Love and Thunder, right. And now we know it's Zeus. What I had hoped it was, was the gardener from the elders and that we would get a scene with all the elders together and then Gore the God Butcher showing up and going after them. Mm. That's what I was hoping for because I wanted to see all the elders and champion and stuff together. Yeah, yeah. Just just that one scene would have been awesome, but no, nope, looks like he's Zeus. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you feel listening to Chadwick? Um, you know, at first I just got caught up in it and cause he, he you know, uh, he was fairly, uh, sounded energetic and joyful and, yeah. and had that sunshine quality that, that, um, that he gener- that he brought to T'Challa, um, uh, where he just, he was, 
he just he had that warmth and uh you know other than in civil war where he was you know dead set on revenge but yeah. you know in his own stuff and at things after civil war he had just had that warmth and um and uh boy that uh, the 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 dedication got me i just oof, took the wind right out of me yeah uh, uh, Absolutely. It, it's such such a damn shame um and the fact that he did so much great work in such a little time work. Yeah, yeah and and so such difficult work both physically uh and uh in terms of the acting uh, it, it, while he was fighting cancer i mean yeah it, and oh i don't didn't really want to tell anybody because i didn't you know i didn't want people to focus on that you know um yep just I, what an amazing human being um so no, yeah i agree i agree so um I thought the connection between him and Yondu was kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, of course, because because Yondu once again lied. But um, but yeah, the fact that they they had a an honest affection for each other. Yeah. Whereas Quill and Yondu were always a little bit of friction going on there. Yep. Yeah. Um, but. You have to wonder what is what does this say about Peter Quill that it, when he's Star Lord, Thanos still tries to destroy the world. Yondu is still a bad guy. Uh, you know, all these bad things are happening be, with Peter. You know, planets are being wiped out. C Gamora's planets cut in half. I mean, all of this is stopped because they take a different child. Yeah. Yeah, but two, T'Challa's upbringing and Peter's upbringing are totally different. Yeah. Even as at the young age, you know, Quill was shaped by, I think we lost Dan. Did we lose Dan? Um, Quill was shaped by, by tragedy, whereas, um, whereas T'Challa was loved and cherished. Um, so, anybody want to jump in on the uh, on the chat? I can't uh, copy your. Uh... Oh, here comes Dan back. There yeah, you yeah. are. I'm I bad. thought I'm you bad. just did this to terrify me. I did. It was absolutely what I did. I had to stand up for a second, so I put you on the main screen. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brian makes a, a uh, interesting uh, comment, which is uh, now Ego's plan can go for forward. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that that is the one thing that we get at the end, and it's not really. I don't think we're ever going to deal with it, but I think the fact that it's, you know, hey, we're, uh, you know, ego got his ego gets his kid, and he doesn't have the years of stuff with Yondu to make him feel, and the years with the Guardians to give him that family build. What type of character is Peter at that point? And does he just embrace the fact that oh, I have a dad now? Yay! Yay! Yeah. Well, it 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 may come up in the second season of What If. True. Uh, you know what? What if Ego's plan came to fruition? Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it would be a nice sense of closure rather than just and Quill was a dick, <laughs> and uh, he was a Quill was a loser. And then uh, you know went along with with ego's plan and made I think that should be the ending line from every episode of what if and Peggy Carter becomes Captain Carter and Quill was a dick. <laughs> Meanwhile, across all the infinite dimensions, Peter Quill was a disappointing was a dick. dick. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Just, just every every episode, mm -hmm. or or maybe like a little editorial box, like in the old comics. Yep. Asterisk. Peter Quill's still a dick. Yes, in this in, in this dimension, Peter Quill still a dick. 
Um, Problem is, every time I hear that, I want it done in the mid Atlantic accent. And Peter Quill is still a dick. Yeah. Uh, poor, poor Quill. He's I know. He's trying to do the right thing. He, he inspired the Guardians of the Galaxy to sort of team up. Yeah, but in this part, he's not even good enough to work at Baskin Robbins. He's at Dairy Queen. Well, that's because in the... Baskin Robbins always knows. Yeah, no. I was going to say, because in in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, he, his mom and ego used to go with Dairy Queen. Mm -hmm. So, But I was going off the, the, the Ant-Man joke about Baskin Robbins always finds out. Oh, so. yes, yes. I see what you're... I, I had for, I had literally forgotten about the Baskin Robbins uh, <laughs> connection in in Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, yeah, we need, we need more Paul Rudd in the Marvel universe. We do. We need Paul. We need Paul Rudd in What If, but not in the way the uh, that poster going around is, which is just a picture of Ant Man oh. flying toward Thanos's butt. It's like. Yeah. I don't think we need a what if about that. We all pretty much know. So. Well, yeah. What we what we know is that he, even if he flew into Thanos's butt and tried to expand, he would probably be crushed by Thanos's colon. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, Brian. Something's going to cause zombies. We know that. So this is. It could be that. It could be the little. Uh, spores that went into uh the black order guy's mouth uh coal obsidian on the yeah i think brian brought this up on my show um the spores that are now running around inside the head of a celestial yeah could it be possible that those spores start bringing the celestial back to life or doing something with the head of celestial Although it's weird because it seems like the spores just make plants grow. So, yeah, it's it's not like a universal it makes whatever it was grow. Yeah. But somebody said, "Oh, why well, you know, they call it the the embers of genesis." And I'm like, "I think it's a Star Trek Trek. reference." Yes, New Genesis. Yeah. Uh, oh, I Brian, I I think that Ant Man What If will be What If Hank Pym created Ultron. Could be. Ah, I I don't think so because uh, because that's just what's already been in the comics. Yeah, uh, Ant Man is going to be in What If. We saw him as a head in a jar. That just immediately made me think of Futurama. Yeah, the me head too. in a jar thing. So yeah. I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious what's going to happen that ends up with Scott's head in a jar. You know? Actually, uh, it'll turn out that he's just actually behind the jar looking through it. So it looks like it's a head in a jar. <laughs> or he screwed up the suit and the head's grown. The rest of his body hasn't. Yeah. yeah. So they have the jar to kind of stabilize it. The, the, the body underneath it's is like little the, little jets that keep the, the tiny it crushed from crushing his tiny body. Yep. Yeah, otherwise, he would just look like Modoc. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever finish Modoc, Dan? No. No. Oh, well. I gave it two full episodes. That's all I could do. Yeah, you know, you do what you can do. Yeah. It's not your fault it. that you're devoid of humor. Well, that's why I have you here. The void of humor. <laughs> uh, well, so we're two episodes into What If Now. I did feel like they were building something in the first episode. I still feel it, but not as strongly after episode two. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know there's other scenes of T'Challa in the Star-Lord outfit. Mm -hmm. Uh, they do that kind of Avengers pan around. And yeah, I know yeah. we're going to get a Guardians of the Multiverse. Yeah. But how do you feel about it? Do you, or do you think we're building to something bigger? I, I think that it's going to tie in to the, the, the idea from Loki that 
you know, a multiverse always leads to multiversal war. Um, that said, I'm, I'm not like so certain that, you know, uh, but I, I mean, it just, it seems like it, it'll all tie in. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing the pattern, mm -hmm. but I feel like there probably is one. So, yeah. Um, building off of what Brian says here at the end of the episode, you ought to says this may be the beginning of the end of the world. And I, I don't think we're going to go back to that because I think the point of this episode was to introduce us to T'Challa Star-Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like the point of the other one was to introduce us to Captain Carter. Where, yeah, yeah. you know, yes, it would be interesting to see how Steve and Bucky and Howard move forward once with uh, Peggy gone. Do they still continue to build S.H.I.E.L.D.? And stuff? All of that seems interesting. But mm -hmm. that's a universe we're not currently playing in. We just needed to see Captain Carter. Where here, I think... There was a lot of stuff. It'd be interesting, like, well, you know, what does happen with ego showing up, stuff like that. I don't think it matters. I don't think, um, I think we're going to end up pulling these characters out of their multiverse for a battle. So I think we're just going to be introduced to the characters we need, you know? Like, I, maybe the Loki we get in the... I think the third episode is supposed to be Loki coming to Earth and the Avengers aren't there to stop him mm -hmm. when he tries to the Battle of New York thing. So we'll end up probably end up meeting a character that'll be part of the group at the end anyway. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So I, I'm curious what that's going to be and how that's going to be different. Uh, eventually, we're going to get... Um, uh, Killmonger, Black Panther, we know that, but yeah, and there'll be a Gamora in um, Thanos's armor. Those, that's what we've seen in the pictures. But how we're going to get there, I think it's just going to be each episode may create or, or show us that character. So when they pull them all together, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's it's establishing that there is a multiverse out there where there's a Captain Carter, where there's a yeah, uh, uh, T'Challa Star Wars Lord. Yeah, and I think it would be a disinterest or a disservice to what they're trying to do if we spent any more than one episode in a single universe. Because right. the whole point of this is to show you how many different universes there are, where mm -hmm. little things can change everything. So, like I said, as 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 interesting of an idea as that ending was. I don't necessarily think we're going to follow up on it. Right. I think that the, the, the line is sort of the follow up to the second volume two of guardians of the galaxy, rather than anything else. Um, you know, that they were just kind of acknowledging that. Her absence was noticeable. But like I said, I don't know if we're going to revisit any of these things until they're all pulled together. Now, it's possible. We may end up coming back to this particular universe. Maybe we will come back and deal with Peter Quill, and that's where Gamora comes in. But, yeah, her being absent, I think, was important because they needed to let Nebula have her shine. Uh, I'm guessing she takes up Thanos' original mission, determined to carry it out. So her planet's fate wasn't for nothing. That's interesting. Mm, I suppose, but um, yeah, I, to me, it's all a question of, you know, when I, I, I almost had the feeling that Gamora just hadn't been... Um, uh, it hadn't been a part of... Thanos's uh, family yeah. uh, in this, but even though the timeline doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily rule it out, right? But, uh, yeah, just the idea that um, yeah, it's 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 weird that if if she was a part of things, she was not mentioned, 
And that says to me that she just did not factor in because in this, in this version, mm -hmm. Gamora wasn't around. Right. So, so we don't know how old she is. I mean, it's a lot of things. It would be, it would be role reversal for Nebula and Gamora, which fits what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Her being the more dedicated one. And that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. Is there any uh, anything we've seen in the trailer that you're most looking forward to in the upcoming what ifs? You like looking forward to the zombie episode or I see the zombie episode really leaves me cold. I don't I'm done with zombies. Yeah, um, I no. never and I never was part I, I never paid any attention to the Marvel zombie books. Um so that one doesn't doesn't have me. I'm curious to see what you know the guardians of the of the multiverse come together. I think that's the, what's interesting me the most. How about you? What's, what's got you on the, the Dr. Strange one th is the one that I'm most looking forward to mm -hmm. to see what pushes him to go so dark, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Zombie Hunter Spider-Man could be, is going to be interesting, but I'm not a big zombie fan anyway. I'm not a walking dead guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I know Tony Moore, who's co-created the series. Tony's a great guy. Just never got into uh, The Walking Dead. Yeah. And yeah. like I said, never been a zombie guy. So that one doesn't excite me as much. Um, I'll watch it because I'll watch all of these. It's yeah, yeah. what you do. Because it's not MODOK. Right. I gave some MODOK a try. What? Well. <laughs> yeah. Sure, I guess, but you know, it's your really your job to to watch the whole thing. So we could have talked about it, but okay. Hey, I watched all of the Bad Batch. Kind of I did my job. Yeah, but uh, not have a good ending. <laughs> you didn't like that? Okay, never mind. We're not talking about the Bad Batch. We're talking about what if. Well, we're kind of at the end of the show anyway, so... That's true. That's let true. Me, what, let me uh, are you me. excited for Shang-Chi, by the way? It's the, I, I am excited for Shang-Chi, and uh, for people who don't know, it, uh, the Marvel Legends stuff, where they kind of recap things going into, an, uh, into a new movie or a new TV show, mm -hmm. there's going to be one dropped on September 1st, and it's going to be Shang-Chi related. My guess, it'll be a history of the Ten Rings, Right. To remind us because there really isn't anything else unless they want to show us uh, Abomination, which they might do too. But yeah. But yeah. So let's go ahead and wrap it up here real quick. What Don says the humor of in Modoc got darker and nastier as the series progressed. If you're not into the humor of the first two episodes, you would have hated the rest. Fair enough. Yeah. You just got to understand Dan just doesn't like things. He, he's he's a sourpuss. Yeah, yeah, I'm a sourpuss. No, I actually I agree with Don on that though. That it did, it just kind of like kept digging deeper, and and I think I mentioned when we talked about Modoc that like while I enjoyed it, it's kind of a shame that we're not seeing anything like that for a younger audience, because I think you know, uh, not necessarily Modoc, but something in that vein yeah uh, that that you know so all right paul where can folks find you i am still to be found at storyville.com uh, at storyville on twitter at storyville on instagram and storyville at facebook slash backslash front slash backslash uh wow. Storyville on slash on uh, on Facebook. So I Storyville is where to look for me. S T O R R I E V I L L E. How about you, Dan? Where can people find your you? What's well, your address? Well, you guys probably already found me because you're watching this episode. But uh, you can find me as Dan Wickline on just about everything. And if you're over on Amazon, look in the new Vela section. For the Embercrest Protocol, my new uh, chapter uh, release or chapter by chapter release new uh, 
Cold War spy thriller with magic inserted into it. Yeah, so a little fun. I uh, would call that serialized. Serialized, yep. Uh, yeah. I don't think we're going to have an episode next week. I will verify with Paul later on. But I have a 18-year-old uh, birthday party to go to, so I will probably not be here. But we, we will verify for sure. If not, then we'll be back in two weeks to talk about two episodes of that and Shang-Chi. So, yeah, Shang yeah, so yeah. thank you all. Have a great week, and we'll see you all soon. Visit me during the week on the Dan Wickline Show over at The Experience. Good night, everybody. Good night, folks.